Welcome to Agenda Edina, a news program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. A home in the Indian Hills neighborhood has been designated as an Edina Heritage Landmark. The mid-century contemporary home was designed by renowned architect Elizabeth Close. Close designed the home for Hendrick and Mari Oscom at 6901 Dakota Trail in the Indian Hills neighborhood. It was one of the first homes built on Indian Head Lake, incorporating the natural terrain as the home is nestled into the sloping hillside. There have been no additions to the international style home since it was constructed in 1963. It's unlike other houses um, because it, it doesn't reference other architectural styles. It's not meant to look like a little colonial house or a cottage. Um, it is very much of the era um, of um, change that was happening in the United States and internationally in terms not only of architecture and design, but things were changing in the world. The way people were living was changing. Earlier this year, the Heritage Preservation Board approved the nomination study identifying the historical significance of the Oscombe House and the plan of treatment providing guidance for preservation of the property. In June, the Minnesota Historical Society identified the Oscombe House as an ideal candidate for local designation, noting that the house is a significant and extremely well-preserved example of international style, close design. The Oscombe House is actually only the fourth private residence to receive Edina Heritage Landmark designation, which makes it really special. And unlike the other three other homes that were built in the 1800s and the early 1900s, this house was built in 1963, which was the period when much of our suburban development occurred in Edina. So it really is significant from a suburban development standpoint as well. Earlier this month, the City Council added the Edina Heritage Landmark District Overlay Zoning designation to the home, ensuring it will be preserved for years to come. Parts of France Avenue are lit up in a whole new way. New decorative lights have been installed on France Avenue at 66th, 70th, and 76th Streets. The LED lights can display countless shades of colors and are programmable. Well, the driving force was during the uh, discussion on lighting during the France Avenue urban design process, there were some stakeholders who thought it would be a great idea to use lights as a way to bring a sense of place to the Southdale areas. The default lights will fade to different shades of green, but will change throughout the year. In October and November, the lights will display a fall theme with reds, oranges, yellows, and browns. As winter blows in, the lights will shine a theme of blues and whites. Other holidays include President's Day, Memorial Weekend, Independence Weekend, Election Day, and Veterans Day, when the lights will shine red, white, and blue in varying intensities to give a waving flag feel. The city will also consider lighting requests from outside organizations. Requests can be made for non-denominational purposes, registered charitable events, and events with community significance. Personal occasions and religious observations will not be considered. The fight between Edina's trail users and buckthorn, an invasive plant, has been going on for decades. Edina 16 Scott Theory takes us to the front lines of this battle where more than 100 volunteers stepped up to help with the fight. After being transported to Minnesota from Europe as a hedging material, buckthorn has been taking over our trails and parks for more than two decades. It's so thick in the woods, it, it pretty much makes it almost impassable uh, to walk through, very difficult at the least. We're basically going to be working along the trails. This, this whole park, we got excellent trails in here, and it's problematic there the most. We came up with the idea, well, let's ask our cities, how can we serve you? What do you need us to do? And so they talked about it for a while, and then the city of Edina got back with us and said, we really could use some help at Bredesen Park pulling buckthorn. Brian Olson told me, it's really hard. And I said, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're committed to the community. If that's what you need, that's what we're going to do. Woo! So we've got people uh, pulling up smaller 
uh, pieces with the little lever. We've got people cutting it down and people coming up behind rounding up that whole thing. Uh, and then we've got kids and uh, people who aren't as skilled like myself are pulling it all away. And so there are four or five different jobs represented and we're trying to take care of a big section of this walking trail. We like to serve our community, get out there, do something practical for the city that we are uh, having services in. So that's what we're here today. We've got over 150 people here and uh, it's just great to be in the city of Edina serving our people. I love when people come together. I love when people are excited. I get energized when people are together. And if you just walk around and look at the faces, we're sweaty faces, but we're having a great time. It is no easy task dealing with an invasive species that has a long history of being hard to defeat. It's considered to be a hundred year war with the buckthorn. If we can stay on top of it and keep going at it, it'll still be a hundred years before we ever get it taken care of. It's gonna be an ongoing thing. And uh, we appreciate the volunteers and the people that we got coming out here. So it's going to work out quite well. From Bredesen Park, I'm Scott Fury, Edina 16. To help with buckthorn abatement or with other invasive species, contact the Public Works Department. Thanks for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.